Hello and welcome to St. James Episcopal Church and the Urban Well. Thank you so much for choosing our community to worship with during this time of Lent. This past Wednesday, we observed Holy Ash Wednesday together and we offered what is called Lent in a Box Since we were not able to physically impose ashes, we were able to provide instructions on how to self-impose ashes and to be with one another in spirit. We continue with speaking of Lent in a Box over the course of the next few Sundays where we will talk about the contents that were within the box we had ashes, so there will be a form series on ashes. In the box were also Anglican rosary beads, Compline prayer, and communion. So there will be a forum focused on each element. We do invite you to join with us in those conversations on Sunday morning. Feel free to register for those sessions on our website. and at stjameslancaster.org. We'll be delighted to have you to come fellowship with us in a community that learns together. Also coming up is a wonderful weekday forum series called Companions of the Sorrowful Way, which will be facilitated by Tim Mackey. Again, join together with members of the community. We invite you as well to sign up for that wonderful book study that will be led by Tim Mackey called Companion, Companions of the Sorrowful Way, a classic book written by John Watson. And again, we are so grateful to have you with us here at St. James Episcopal Church and the Urban Well, virtually and in spirit.
I invite you to pray with me. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray together the Collect of the Day. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan, and just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of a forgiving, loving, and just God who sees us in our struggles. Amen. We enter into the season of Lent together. It is considered a season of penitence because it's an opportunity for us to confess and repent, which means to turn, to change, to transform. We have an intentional 40 days set aside to listen for the voice of God. How will the Holy Spirit show up for you in your personal and communal walk with God for these 40 days and 40 nights and hopefully beyond? In our gospel lesson today, in the gospel of Mark, Jesus was just baptized. God acknowledges Jesus as God's beloved son in whom God is well pleased. And in good Mark fashion, in that sense of urgency in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus immediately is driven or moves intentionally into the wilderness. It is in this wilderness that the narrative tells us that Jesus is tempted by Satan and is with the wild beasts then waited on by the angels. 
The King James Version tells us that Jesus was ministered unto by the angels. I love how that sounds. It sounds refreshing for a soul that is experiencing distress. It sounds refreshing for a soul that has just gone through a struggle for the angels to minister to us at the end. That's our light at the end of the tunnel. That is our hope. In the narrative, what I do want to highlight is the word wilderness. What comes to mind when you hear the word wilderness? I don't know about you, but when I hear the word wilderness, I think about the woods, a forest, maybe even a desert. But interestingly, in some of the translations, the word for wilderness can either mean desert or it could mean a secluded place. So I ask you and and invite you to put on your sanctified imaginations for a moment. And in thinking about this particular story, Jesus is driven into not so much a forest, but into a secluded place. Think about it. The wilderness experience or this experience with seclusion can easily connect and be so relevant to where we are in our lives right now. Where do you feel or experience the most seclusions? It is in this place where Jesus is not only tempted by Satan, but experiences wild beasts. And so often when we think of wild beasts, we're thinking of animals that are crawling around on four legs in the woods, but we're not thinking about it in a spiritual sense. What are we up against? What are we fighting against or fighting for? How are these wild beasts symbolically showing up in your secluded space? How do you feel as though Satan might be tempting you? Or what temptations are you facing? Being bruised and assaulted and tempted on all sides by Satan and wild beasts. Leaving our hearts and our souls and our minds in a space of despair, depression, and sometimes delusion. How can we, as community and individuals, utilize this time together to listen for the voice of God in our secluded place? How can our lives replicate that of Jesus during his experience in the wilderness, in the secluded place? How can we, too, walk that walk, so that in the end, we too can be ministered unto by the angels. Our hearts, our minds, our souls are in need of refreshment. And while it is great to be able to give up some things during the season of Lent, many will give up social media or chocolate, but what about some of those harder things the things that are more challenging and not so easily ignored or avoided by not by avoiding the aisle at the grocery store or by turning off our devices. What if for Lent we gave up gossiping? What if for Lent we gave up lying? What if for Lent we gave up selfishness? What would our spiritual lives look like by giving up those things and implementing a transformative spiritual practice. Give up hatred. Practice kindness. Give up gossiping and practice affirmation and validation. In giving up these things, 
we are filled with more positive, life-changing practices in our lives that make us better and in turn makes others around us better. So during this season of Lent, may we forever be changed because when you're in the wilderness, when we are in the wild, you're not supposed to come out the same. So may we all be changed for the better during these 40 days and beyond. And may we change and transform in ways that are life-giving and loving and nurturing together. And may those angels surround you with words of affirmation and kindness and love and the gentleness that you need during this time. Amen. Brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ, as always, we invite your prayers during this portion of our service, Prayers of the People. I'll be reading from Form 4 if you would like to follow along in your Book of Common Prayer on page 388 or with the bulletin, or feel free to simply listen in and as one in a prayerful spirit joining our hearts together in spirit. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, 
live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to honor and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, lifting up all of those who requested our prayers, whose names are listed. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. During our holy observance in the season of Lent, you will notice that there will be some deferring prayers that are offered and various scriptures that speak to a penitential spirit in a contrite heart. As we continue in this prayerful, prayerful spirit together for our confession and absolution. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Friends, join me in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you for the next 40 days and beyond and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.